Hi friends, my name is Loazi and thank you for joining me once again. And if you're new to my channel, please hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps my channel reach a wider audience. If you haven't watched any of my videos, please watch them on the Teaching in China playlist before watching this one. And without wasting any time, let's get on to today's video. Once you've decided that you want to move to China and have secured a teaching job, the biggest hurdle that most applicants face is financing their way to China. Now, this can be particularly costly if you don't have a source of income or you're a fresh graduate like how I was. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you how much it costs for me to move to China, as well as tips and advice of how to finance your way to China and also reduce the cost to come to China. I moved back to China two and a half months after graduating and I didn't have any much money saved, nor did I have a stable job. So this was going to be particularly difficult for me to come back. So these are some of the things that I did in order to reduce the cost of coming to China. The first thing I did was find a job that offered a free or a fully funded apartment, which meant that I didn't have to come with a rental deposit. Now in China, renting an apartment can be costly and depending on the city or the type of apartment that you're looking for, you can be expected to pay anything from three months to up to six months of rent up front. And that can end up costing a lot, especially if you're a new graduate and you're coming to China for the first time and you don't have a lot of money saved up. So if you can apply for jobs that have free or fully funded apartments, so in order to reduce your cost. And if it's a fully funded apartment, make sure that they send you pictures of how the apartment looks like so that you know what you're getting yourself into and it's an apartment that's in good condition that's the, that you are able to live in. Number two, if it's possible, ask for your company for an advance to sponsor your flight ticket to come to China, if that's possible. So if you're struggling to find a flight ticket, you might ask your HR personnel to help you get an advance from your company. And I have to mention this, that certain companies are not willing to offer a flight advance. This is because certain people will not pitch up for the jobs they have accepted, or sometimes they'll switch midway and take other companies. So if you are serious about coming to China and have secured a job, make sure that you either ask them to book your ticket for you or plead your case and make sure that they understand that you are really you do want to come here, but you just don't have the money, the means to finance your flight ticket. Most jobs will come with the flight reimbursement and which you get back after you've arrived in the country. And most cases you usually get it back after three months or after the probation period has finished. Number three, carry essentials with you. These essentials could be either bedding, hair products, as well as cosmetics. When I came to China, I made sure that I asked the company that I was going to work for to send me the dimensions of the bed so that I could bring my own bedding. That way I was able to cut down costs. So if it's possible, please bring your own bedding and cosmetics and hair products to last you for a few weeks up until you get your first paycheck. That way you're able to cut down costs. Number four, do not bring a lot of clothes. Try your best to limit yourself to the standard luggage limits offered by your airline. That way you don't have to pay for extra luggage because that could get really expensive really fast. And if it's possible, just bring two or three items from each clothing. That way you don't really have a lot of luggage space, a lot of luggage to carry around with you. And another thing is you will build your, like, your closet as time goes by once you've settled into your new city and in, the new city, in your new city's climate. Because you have to remember that in South Africa, we don't really have that much of a cold climate. So you will still might need to get new jackets and coats that you haven't really needed previously before in your life because South Africa doesn't really have that climate. Clothing is really affordable and accessible in China, so you don't really have to bring a lot of clothes. I know for, I've seen some of the comments from uh, plus-sized individuals, people, that they used to struggle to find clothes. I know someone who does a lot of uh, videos about wearing plus-sized clothes. And Tabi saying, I'll make sure to link her channel in the description down below, so you might check it out. But there are options for plus-sized individuals that you can find clothes here in China. So you don't really have to bring a lot of clothes when you first come here. That way you limit your cost of luggage uh, space as well as you can add other things which are very essential that you might not find in China. Number five, 
find out if your company offers meals. Now, a lot of companies in China tend to generally offer meals during work days. So if your company does offer meals, you could have all of your meals during work days, and then you could support yourself only on your off days, on your rest days. Then you'd need to buy groceries or you'd have to eat out. And this could cut your cost tremendously, especially if you're on a tight budget and you don't have a lot of money coming here into China. I have to mention this, that most of the meals that are offered during work days will be probably be Chinese food. So if you struggle to eat Chinese food, you might have to get groceries or have takeout, and this will ultimately affect your cost that you need to come with to China. So if it's possible, please try and eat uh, Chinese food that's offered in your company. That way you can cut down cost now how much it cost for me to move to china now before i say this i have to mention that i was living here before as a student so i was fairly familiar with the cost of living in china so and i was also living below my means so please bear that in mind before you make a decision about how much money you might need for yourself to move to china so in total i came with about 3,000 RMB, which is about 7,000 Rand. Now, this is in excluding the flight ticket that I had to purchase for myself. The flight ticket was about 9,000 Rand, which was a single journey return ticket that I was obviously going to get a reimbursement of after I had finished my uh, probation period. This is what I used to sustain myself up until I got my first paycheck. I was fortunate enough to have a company that offered three meals a day, which meant that I had all of my meals during my work days at work, and then I only had to sustain myself during the weekends only, so I had to buy groceries for that. I mostly used my money to pay for, to get uh, house supplies and a few miscellaneous stuff like detergent, etc. So I, I didn't really need a lot of money during my first few days here because most of my living expenses were fully paid for or were partly funded so in total i spent about sixteen thousand rands for the money that i came with here as well as the flight tickets there were also other miscellaneous fees that i had to pay for such as i had to pay for an agent to go and collect my police clearance certificate in pretoria I'm originally from Durban, so I couldn't really travel by myself to Pretoria. So I paid an agent to go and collect my documents for me and also send them to the relevant offices to get them notarized. So in total, that was about 1,300 rands. And that's including the fees for the lawyer to get my TEFL certificate notarized. I also bought a few snacks, seasoning and spices, which I took with me to China in my luggage cases. And I don't really remember how much that was that costed me, but it wasn't more than around 700 rands, if I'm not mistaken. So I also bought that, those things which I took with me uh, because these are products that you won't necessarily find in China. But at the moment now, because we haven't really been home for two years, a lot of South Africans have started importing um, South African products. So you don't really have to do that now because we have most of the South African products that we need here in China. They do sell them, although they do sell them at a marked up price, but it's still better. We get a taste of home. Things that you might need to pay for once you get here to China. So please consider this as part of your cost to moving to China. The first thing is Wi-Fi. So depending on your apartment, you might need to have Wi-Fi installed in your apartment. And Wi-Fi could cost anything from like 400 to 500 RMB. And that's between 1,000 to 1,200 rands. So I was fortunate enough that my apartment came with free Wi-Fi. So I didn't really have to worry about that. Number two, you will definitely need a SIM card. Now, China uses plans for their SIM card. So depending on the plan that you choose, you might pay anything from, from as low as 13 RMB to as high as 100 RMB. Now, that could be between 26 rands to as high as 224 rands. So depending on the package that you take, uh, it will also depend on how much money you're going to pay for. The next thing, depending on the city that you're living in, you might consider getting a bus or a metro card, which you can use to get around. 
We use buses or metros to get around for public transportation. And the amount honestly depends on how often you would use public transportation. But generally, a single journey trip would be anything from three to six RMB, which is about six to 13, 14 rands per journey. And lastly is Didi's, which, has a, which is our own version of like a, an Uber. So these can be quite expensive and they also obviously depend on how many kilometers you use. So it, it, it just depends on, how, on how, far, how far you're going and obviously the price will be influenced by that. And lastly, utility bills. Depending on your accommodation situation, you might have be you might be expected to pay for your own utility bills, and these include electricity, gas, and water. These are generally not expensive and can be anything from 150 RMB to 400 RMB. And it obviously depends on how much you, uh, how much water and electricity you use as an individual and also between seasons. So yeah, it varies. So I can't really tell you how much, but these are things that you have to budget for in your cost of moving to China. So make sure that you know what's your accommodation situation. Will you be paying for your own utility bills or your company will be paying for you? That way you can factor in how much you might need to come with to China. And that's about it for today's video. I don't know if I forgot anything, but if I did, please comment in the comment sections below. And, but apart from that, thank you for joining me for today's video and I will see you in the next one.